Hi guys, in this video we're going to be solving the uh, previous question paper for November 2016, paper 1. So we're going to focus on the electrical machines. So this is the question that we're going to be doing, electrical machines. Okay, so it's question 9. Question 9. So the first question says, uh, a generator is shown below. Assume that coil is in a vertical position. So the coil, if the coil is in a vertical position, that tells you that it doesn't conduct. It doesn't conduct. It should be horizontal so that you can induce the EMFs. So they say, is the generator above AC or DC? Give reason for the answer. Okay. So, in order for you to know that it's a DC, a DC, guys, a DC, as you can see there, there's a split, there's a split there, there's a split. So, there's a split rings. So, if a generator has got split rings, it tells you that it's DC. Or this split ring, sometimes they say it's a commutator. Or you can say it's a it has got a commutator. So it has got a commutator. So DC has got split rings. If you see this, this the split, just know that it's DC. But if it was like this, then this was going to be a different scenario you see this one has got a split split rings it's DC it's DC so the answer is DC because it has got split rings so or it uses split rings So to remember that it was for split rings, let's say it will conduct, stop, and not go to the other cycle, then conduct again, that's DC, and conduct again. So it doesn't conduct all the time like this. It conducts and stop, it split. It will conduct only for this one, and then stop, conduct for this one, then stop, you see. So it doesn't conduct all the time. So this is gauge and induced EMF versus time graph. So I already drew the graph. So they're trying to confuse you. Just know that. Just know that. EMF versus time graph. So you'll have something like this. This side is voltage. The side is time, so that's the graph for DC like this. It's always like this for DC. Then let's go to the next question. So DC, I told you that it's split. You see, split rings in between. So it will conduct. Already they drew the graph for you. Look, it conducts and then stop. Conducts, stop. Conducts again, stop. It conducts, stop. Conducts, stop. It doesn't conduct all the way because it's split. So 9.2.1. This one, this one right here. So we're going to put it here. So they say AC generator is operating at a maximum EMF of 340. Maximum EMF. It is connected across a toaster and a kettle as shown. So this is your power. And then this is your another, another power. So this is the power, let's name it PK, 
NPT, the toaster. The said toaster is rated at 800, while the kettle here you can see. Both are working under optimal condition. Calculate the I current passing through the toaster. So we're going to use the power for toaster. We're only going to focus on the toaster. We're going to use that power for 800 PT because they want a toaster. So operating maximum EMF. That maximum EMF it tells you that it's a VMAX. See, they told you that it's a maximum EMF. It's a VMAX. They didn't say from a whole socket, no. They say an AC generator is operating at a maximum. It's a VMAX. It's a maximum. So they want IRMS current. So IRMS current equals to, so you've got VMAX, which is equals to 340. I always write the data down, and P, which is 800. What? So they want, let's check. So what they are looking for, you've got IRMS. They want IRMS, where you have got, so this one you can use. This one you can use because you are looking for IRMS and then they gave you the average. And then the reason I'm using this one is because they also gave me the VMAX. The VMAX can help me to find the VRMS. You see how easy it is? Because if you go to the other side, the VRMS easier to find if you know your Vmax. So we can use that formula. So the initial formula says P average is equals to IRMS times PRMS. So the reason I'm using this formula is because of I know that they gave me Vmax. You check what you're given. They gave me VMAX, so VMAX can help me to find VRMS because VRMS is equals to VMAX over root 2. This formula. Then I can find the answer. So I can just say V average, which is 8. So the P average, which is 800, is equals to IRMS, open bracket, VMAX, which is 340, over root 2. Or you can calculate the VRMS separately just to get max. So this will give me, let's make this side. So this will give you 340 divided by root 2. So it will be 2, 240. 240.416. Volts. This is a point four one six volts. So IRMS would be equals to eight hundred divided by two forty point four one six. Therefore, IRMS is equals to. Hundred divided by two forty point four one six 
with this money so you see 3.3 so we'll just say 3.3 amps so you can use any formula guys to find those values so let's go to the second question on this one i'll just say b they say total rms current delivered by the generator total rms delivered by the generator so the generator as you can see the generator is this one it's a combination basically the generator is this one right here so the generator has got combination of this tree so the generator has got a toaster and a kettle that are connected in parallel as you can see it's a parallel connection these powers are connected in parallel they are connected in parallel so they want the total irms current so what i can do is what i can do is to get What I can do is to take uh, to calculate the current. Remember, let me show you a simple scenario. Do you know that this has got its own IRMS? Then also, you see it's splitting. This one has got its own RMS. So, what if I calculate? The IRMS for the kettle and combine it. I so this IRMS total will just say total is equals to IRMS because it's a parallel circuit toaster. I'll just write toast plus IRMS because it's a parallel circuit K. I'll just write K, it's a kettle. So I just need to calculate the IRMS for the kettle and then combine it with the IRMS for toast. It's fine. So I know that my P, P average for K for kettle is equals to 2000. So 2000 watt. And then the Vmax will always be the same. 340 volts then so we're going to use the same formula that we used to calculate this so we're going to use the same method so we say p average goes to irms times vrms so the only change will be this one 2000 is equals to irms we already know that this one is 340 divided by a root of 2 and then IRMS let's name it IRMS K to show that it's for kettle it will be equals to 2000 we already calculated the 340 so it gave us 240.1 if I remember correctly Point four one six okay. Point four one six. Then this will give us the RMS that you are looking for. So if we go to the previous question and edit this instead of 800 see just say 2000 so it's 8. 8.32 So you're just gonna say, therefore, 
the total IRMS, you combine these two, your cattle and the toast, like I showed you earlier. So you just say IRMS total equals to 8.32 plus 3.33. So this is IRMS for toast. Then this one, okay, headlamp. Then get the total. So the total will be eleven point six five amps. This will be your answer. And that's how you solve it. That's how you solve that question.